Hey, everybody! Scott, there's no sound coming from your end whatsoever. <laughs> Don't know what's happening there. Uh, just to make sure I'm not going crazy, I'm going to bring in the Podfather, who's here as well. Let's give Scott a listen. Scott, how are you? Scott's gone. Scott's he gone, up. like his audio. I feel like every time Scott walks away from the computer, it just goes to shit. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to uh, find the Facebook link for for round three, which we're watching now, uh, and so that I can share it. So, uh, well, it's on the YouTube channel. It's it on is. the Facebook page as well, which does mm -hmm. remind me before I do this screen share. Let me adjust that real quick. Uh, do to do, do just doing you know maintenance. <laughs> You know what? You got to do it throughout the stream. It's just the way to go. Um, but I'm I'm watching it on the stream now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and share it. If you give me two seconds, hope everybody's well. Um, and I'm sorry for this little uh, bit of maintenance. It's all right. Hey, listen, we've been going at this point for over ten hours, um, and there's only been a couple hiccups. So I feel like. That's a pretty damn good ratio, <laughs> in all sincerity. Uh, so let's talk about a little bit about what we're here for and what we're going to be doing while we wait for Scott to, to figure out the mic issue. So we are here to help raise money for Scares That Care. So in the scroll bar down there, you'll see a link, but you can also just type that in to a search bar, uh, scaresthatcare.org backslash donate dash now. We're not telling you what to donate, but please donate to them. They're an amazing charity. And when you do that donation, get a copy of the receipt and forward it to us at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. At the end of the night, we will do a drawing and someone will win a prize of a ton of cool shirts. Uh, we are going to try to cater it to your... Uh, preferences so coming up right now pod father's here scott <laughs> be here in a second we are going to do a tier list which is a thing that has been pretty popular on the internet lately and i enjoy watching them so let's make one why not uh but after that our friend kyle the director of survival of the film freaks will be joining us for uh something that's normally a patreon exclusive we're going to give it to you for free on this live stream uh and that will be fear street pitch in which scott pulls up a random fear street book by rl stein and we look at the cover of it for a couple seconds and then pitch the movie version of it so um, that's awesome so that should be fun and then hey scott's back let's see if we can hear him can you hear me yeah, we can definitely hear you now, Scott. Oh, thank you. fucking God. Uh, so, and go. then when that is over, our good friends at Fright School are going to hop on the feed to do their dual review of the Witches remake, as well as the newest craft film. And then finally, the main event, the one that I am the most excited for, is the fantasy drafting of the scariest moments in movies that aren't horror films uh, with <laughs> Scott, Robert Bacon of 91 Donkey Lane, and Ashley Victoria Robinson of the geek history lesson that should be a good time but now let's do our tier list and i am very proud of this tier list i'm not gonna lie uh so you could rank it all types of things but scott and i decided that we were going to go with songs from the 80s since most of these are films from the 80s so in the top tier is you're simply the best which would say <laughs> it's like a five-star five rating a four-star rating is just like Kevin. A three-star eh, is a with or without you. A two-star is another one bite the dust. And a one-star is a bad, you know, like the Michael Jackson song. Um, so <laughs> here we go. Uh, I'm going to do this. I was trying to figure out the best way that we were going to do this. And I love that the color coding is a little bit confusing. Usually green is like top tier and red <laughs> is what you want to avoid. You got a little flipped. Yeah, I mean, that's just the way that Tier Maker did it for us. So wow, I'm going to go. You're making my actual tears happen. You got to <laughs> fix that. Tier maker. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a bunch of the first movies. Then we're going to do a bunch of the second movies and, and so on and so forth. So kicking it off, we have this is boom. Nightmare on Elm Street, the OG film, uh, yeah. arguably the i would say probably the most important slasher film of the 80s uh, i think it redefined 
the slasher genre uh, after it had become very stagnant with the regular guy with a knife stabbing a bunch of people and went into a whole different realm that uh, many films tried to copy, uh, but never successfully. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm curious about you guys, but, but I feel like there's no way this doesn't end up in the simply the best category. Yeah. And I'm almost safe to say like willing to throw it in there right now. It's just that Nightmare on Elm Street was my favorite. And I, the, I as a kid, uh, all, all those years ago on this weekend, you'd find me dressed as Freddy. Uh, I think I was Freddy for a, about five or six Halloweens uh, of my, uh, you know, young life. And, and that's before high school. That's probably before middle school. So <laughs> as like an elementary <laughs> school kid, I'm dressing up as, as Freddy walking around. He was just, he's just funny and he's cartoonish. And anybody who's into comic books, uh, there was that kind of louder style that Freddie had that nobody else had. And I mean, I know that this is Scott's favorite horror movie of all time. Yeah, so I don't think already we going in. Simply the best. That is an, uh, I mean, yeah, let's go ahead and put it in instantly. Simply the best. No, Matt, let, let, and Scott, help me out here. Do these things get knocked out possibly if we find something that we're like, okay, wait. I think that it's going to be like <clears throat> um, continuous perfection as we get yeah. through the list. Yeah. I think that we're pretty safe to, I mean, it's safe to put it in there now. Yeah. Okay. So we threw that in there. Let's see. What's the next one in the, cause this is all, gen okay, here, we'll go with this one. Are you Child's auto generating ball. them? Uh, sort of. Um, I pulled all of the photos, but they're not in any specific order in the folder that they're in. So I'm kind of scrolling, trying to find them. Cause I want to do the first of each franchise. Uh, so I, don't think just should, kind of I think that it should go. I think that you should just let chance let it be a, a, a case of ch a game of chance, dude. Because, like, we're definitely gonna come back and have to move things. Uh, I mean, no. do you want to introduce all the, all five franchises first, and then we discuss, and then yeah, we start. I, I feel like at least I, that's fine. Yeah, let us at least. Yeah, we'll at least introduce the the originals of each category because I can tell you that I'm not putting Child's Play in no simply the best. <laughs> like no, no. no, and I don't think it goes in simply the best as well. But I have a tough time putting it as low as with or without you because it it's still a fun movie for me. That first one still kind of reinvented the possessed doll thing that we'd only really seen in you know my my uncle in Mexico used to show us this one video with the with the dolls always like turning their heads, and I think that. Wasn't Anthony Hopkins in a possessed uh, magic? He, he was in magic. magic. Like this is, I mean, this was one that needed reinvention, and they reinvented it as as, as a slasher movie, less of a psychological movie. And uh, I'm, I mean, I, where would you put this? Because I so, don't feel okay putting it in with or without you. I'm putting I'm, it in with or without you just because there are better movies in the series. There are at least two more better movies in the series than the original. I would, I opinion. would 100 agree with. I, I think. Yes, like, is it an important movie? Is it the first one that got there? For sure. But there is a 20-minute subplot that's just Chucky talking to a voodoo character that is punishing and just destroys the pacing <laughs> of this movie. <laughs> okay, you convinced me. Let's put it in with or without you. You're yeah. right. I wouldn't put it lower than that. Like, I don't... I right. think there is, there is some really rough movies that have come out in some of these franchises, but yeah. I think... Right there in the with or without you category is definitely appropriate. Um, so let's see. What is the next big franchise that we're going to throw in here? Oh, I don't know. How about a little motherfucker named Jason uh, who doesn't appear in this movie until the very end? But I you mean, know, Friday you, the 13th. If, we know that you wouldn't die in being a screen because you know that Jason doesn't show up until the second one. Yeah, I would have survived. Um, although Scream was the first slasher movie I saw, so that would have been where I learned that information. Um, <laughs> I'm also realizing that we probably could have thrown we could have thrown the Scream movies in this, and I'm surprised we, we did. We still can. Uh, John, uh, we, we can't. We can, movies. Matt, because I have an opinion. I have an opinion okay. on the Scream movies for sure. Okay. Okay, I'll. Uh, uh, you guys talk this out real quick, and I'll get the images that I need for that real fast. I'm putting this in just like heaven. What do you think? Uh, agreed. It's I, not the best Friday Thirteenth movie, but it is the one that set the ground, and it doesn't have that twenty-minute voodoo sequence. So, uh, <laughs> you know, 
I, yeah, let's put it there. Um, and plus, the, the twist is really good. Like, I think that the ending, is, the twist is, I think it had a lot of people, you know, shocked, of, you know, did everything that a horror movie should do. And then at the end, it has that jump scare. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. I, while I don't, this isn't the first Friday the 13th uh, movie I would want to put on, it's far from the worst and it is an enjoyable movie. It's, I think that, um, you know, at the time that this came out, slasher movies got just wrecked in the uh, film <laughs> review world. And I feel like Friday the 13th specifically is one that is quite unjustly uh, trashed because I think that it was a lot more creative than it got credit for. Um, so we're going to throw in this guy here, and then this is going to come with an important caveat. Uh, so we've got Hellraiser here. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah. we got Hellraiser here. So Scott and I talked this out. <laughs> and because there's about 17 um, Hellraiser movies that are all straight to DVD trash, we're going to stick with with this, and uh, for the most part, the movies that we're discussing had some type of theatric release. So. Right, because when we get to Puppet Master, when I saw that that Puppet Master was going to be on this list, I was like, "Oh hell no, we're not going down that road." <laughs> <laughs> Puppet Master has put up some straight trash. <laughs> You're gonna um, need to talk to your buddy Charles Band about that one, Matt, next time we go to Comic Con. <laughs> So people are already saying that they think this one should go into the simply the best category. Um, I mean, I definitely think it shouldn't ever be lower than just like heaven. I think it is a very well-made movie. I agree. Now I'll tell you, Megan and I just watched about half of it um, a couple days ago and it's a great fucking movie. Right. But um, I don't think it's the best Hellraiser. I, because I think the pacing of this movie isn't a slasher pacing. It's a, kind of a haunted house pacer yeah. um and so i would put this at just like heaven because the effects are fantastic the cenobites look so good the acting is fantastic I, I think it's a great directorial debut but i just can't put it at simply the best i would put it at, at just like heaven matt i'm gonna sit i'm gonna stick with scott on this one uh if not for that character design and just how creative clive barker is i don't know what kind of movie you actually get. And and as if we're ranking slasher movies, Scott's got a good point. All right. And I'll, I'll, I'll agree to that. I do love that movie. I think that as far as, and this is something that you and I have talked about with a lot of things, Jonathan, but someone just coming out of the gate first film with a very unique concept, unique style, um, just making a bold statement. Now, unfortunately, I don't think Clive Barker ever hit the heights of that first movie nope, ever again. Never again. <laughs> but, but, but he talk about making an entrance. Um, all right. So John name dropped this one. So let's just throw in that first Puppet Master movie. It's uh, I, I mean, I'm not. This isn't going, and simply the best. No. Um, it probably doesn't even deserve to be in Just Like Heaven. But I feel like I can't best because it's not a bad movie. It's just not like a very cohesive rewatch movie. You know, I think it's the first one that we can put. It's yeah, exactly. I, I am it's, it's only, a movie. Yeah, I'm only going to concede to that because uh, there are two other ones that are yeah, definitely two and three are <laughs> much better movies. So yeah. Uh, so we'll, yeah, I'm fine with that. We'll, we'll toss this bad boy into another one bites the dust. Um, so not looking good for reanimated toys. On this <laughs> no. Uh, so here's one that I will fight tooth and nail. This bad boy is, Oh no. Some of these are That's a simply little... the best. Yeah, no, yeah. 100%. There's, I, I would, now, Jonathan, I want to talk to you about this a little bit because, like, to me, this is, I've said a million times, this is the best uh, horror film ever made. I love this movie. Right. Now, and I give it to one that, I give that title to one that's not a slasher movie. I give that to Not a Living Dead, which is a fair, very fair call. Yeah. Now, the um, question that I have is like watching it as a kid in Pennsylvania, I'm curious if this movie hits differently growing up so close to where it was shot oh my god you had to drive past this house you had to like <laughs> beg you had to beg people to drive past like where the house was and there was always a, you know today with like the internet we know where the house is but 
in like the late 80s, early 90s, you don't really know where the house is, but you just have like rumors and it's not really something that you can research. There wasn't even MapQuest or any of that in the late 80s, early 90s, but you'd get together in middle school and you would talk about where you thought the house was and people would claim that they'd seen it down some ranch road somewhere. <laughs> And you would try and get together when people started driving and find the house. Um, it also is a movie that makes you physically ill, which is why I give uh, best horror movie of all time to uh, Night of Living Dead, because it makes me physically ill. Um, this is another one that makes you physically ill. So uh, I think I think someone called it in the comments. Let's throw it up there. That's an easy one. That might be the easiest one we do all Super day. Super easy one. No, I mean, that Nightmare on Elm Street went in there real fast. <laughs> that is true, too. Uh, John, while I'm pulling up this next one, someone had a good question, which I'm just going to say, if you have fun doing with this, this with us tonight, this should be a Geekscape episode one day, but on what a holiday do you rank the Jean-Claude Van Damme movies? You'd have to look at Belgian holidays, I think. I think you'd have to, you'd have to see like what Belgian holiday would be appropriate for Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. But I got to tell you, sitting with you and Scott doing this, I uh, I have one of my favorite genres in horror is the critter genre. Yeah. If you want to you put gremlins in there, Little obviously. <laughs> any, any, anybody who's a, uh, anybody who's a longtime horror movie night, fan knows that I'm a big fan of gremlins and uh, so <laughs> I mean Matt, Matt was on Geekscape this past week and he even got a female <laughs> gremlin shout out from one of our characters on Geekscape but uh, I would love to have like you know obviously ghoulies and so just gremlins like the gremlins and, the, the tiny critter the killer critters yeah, movie yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> dude, that would be an amazing have, tier dude. list Let's put munchies in there. Let's put all these little foam monster things in there. Let's let let let's let it rip. <laughs> uh, so, John, you threw out that there's a controversial statement, and I'm curious because my to me, scream is is easy entry into the simply the best category. But I have a feeling that you're you're trying to say otherwise, or are you just talking no. about the other sequels? Uh, I'm saying that the other sequels might. I, I think that the. We'll we'll get to the fourth one because I think the fourth one was like a really creative fourth movie because it came so late after the franchise was basically gone and nobody was thinking about Scream movies anymore. He has the cojones to go and make Scream 4 and he <laughs> made it as fresh as I feel like the other ones were. Um, and I don't feel oh, 2 or 3 get tired. Than Scream 3. Yeah, I, I just don't feel like it. Like like 2 and 3 get tired either. Like, like the Scream movies are all really high quality. So... And the series was uh, high quality. I'm just like, buddy, I'm into when it. was the last time you watched Scream 3? Yeah, Scream oh, no, 3. No. There's a reason it wasn't an immediate Scream 4. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I thought Scream I, 2 was fun and creative. Um, but Scream 1, I, I, let's, I mean, I want to put it in simply the best, but it's a, you guys are the hardcores. I, I mean, I know the same way that Scott says like how much Freddy kind of changed the game for him. Um, that's scream. I wouldn't be hosting the show if Scream didn't exist. Scream is is a a huge influence on me. Really diving into horror movies, I gotta put it in the simply the best and category. It, it's hardcore. We were talking, Heidi and I were talking about Scream the other night, and it's just so that first scene when she starts calling for her mommy, and you're just like, no, this is too much. It's like what a freaking meat hook in your chest on that scene. And uh, and I'm old enough to see it to have seen it in theaters in high school, and just thinking that it was like such a holy shit jaw dropping movie. That first scene, especially. So let's. So now that we've gotten the main tier, we've got all the main ones on the list. Mm -hmm. Now it's time. Uh, I'm gonna throw that up there. Now we're just gonna go buck wild. I'm just gonna go in the order that the. <laughs> that the folder that these are in place them. Matt, so. if there's one thing that I've known about you for the last 15 years is that your like go-to status is buck wild. I am. Nothing <laughs> describes Matt <laughs> Kelly like just off the cuff, not overthinking it, just no neuroses, <laughs> just buck wild. There's no way he's wearing pants right now. Matt Kelly is wasn't your nickname in college raw dog? Like you were just a <laughs> you're just a buck wild kind of dude. Oh yeah. Uh, so <laughs> now that that's over, <laughs> please go uh, buck wild. Don't let us stop you. <laughs> please stop. 
please. Hey, Jonathan, do you want to be part of the uh, live stream? Yes. Okay. Can we just do a Geekscape roast? I like these tear makers and all, <laughs> but like, let's just put me in the natural element where it's just burning all of my friends to the point where several of them aren't my friends anymore. And let's just put me in my natural element of just roasting people. Uh, so I don't think that you can roast Matt to the point of him not wanting to be your friend. Because his self-esteem is I've so tried. low. Like, come on. <laughs> like, Scott. <laughs> All right. So focus back on here. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Um, many, many years ago, I would have been tossing this in another one bites the dust or bad. But my appreciation for this movie has grown over the years. Um, as much as I like it, and I, I do appreciate that move this movie i also feel like just like heaven might be pushing it like i feel like it's, this is a so with or without, or without you. you it really is yeah. and that's being generous with it because i think that I was gonna it's a, a really, really good bit. movie oh you that were gonna special effects what were you gonna say john well i think scott was about to say why i i I was gonna put it on another one bites the dust and a lot of that is just because it comes on the heels of one of the best Such horror movies of all time, and as a sequel, yeah. as a sequel, it's like the Legend of Zelda two. It's kind of like, it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like Super Mario two, you know what I mean? Like, no, you can't know. say Super Mario two because Super Mario two is a phenomenal video game. I know, but it's also Toki Toki Panic, and it's not really a Mario game. Like, like watching <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street okay. two, you're like, this is like when Nintendo had to make sequels to Zelda and Mario, and they just found some rando ass game that was already in development and slap the characters into them and you end up with like zelda 2 and mario 2 and you're like wait this is a complete i'm almost different change and, and with this one i really love that scene with the bus at the beginning and i love the tongue phone but oh no that was the first one uh that's the first I think, one. <laughs> no, I, think, I think this one i just like the bus scene <laughs> this one the bus scene's great i think that the um the the um freddy through the chest scene is really great um yeah i when, feel like it's a good screams and there's the eye in the middle of his throat i mean there's there are a lot of cool special effects in this movie if that's what we're really i mean that's, if that's, that's why how I'm arguing with you without you. like okay yeah let's like i would argue with it without you because it's it's like like there's all the things that you're saying john like totally makes sense but there's also a part of me that like so, like your example, the the flaw in your example yep. is that uh, Nintendo. I almost said Nickelodeon. Nintendo <laughs> um, actively just grabs some other script, essentially, and slapped characters in it. But like the pure balls to just be like, "Fuck it!" <laughs> like this is what we're going to do as a sequel is like kind of admirable to me. Yeah, it's not, it's not, I think the, I think a better equivalent to my Nintendo. Uh, you know, metaphor would be season of the witch. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's got yeah, that season okay. of the witch. Fuck it, vibe. Yeah. Um, oh, so we didn't let... even put the Halloween's in this, Matt. No, we didn't. But we already did our. I think we did our Halloween <laughs> rankings last Halloween. So I feel like that's Fair. totally right. fine. Oh, uh, then you gotta put uh, Halloween three and simply the best because Atkins takes his shirt off and he's nothing but eighties <laughs> hair. <laughs> uh, uh, I want to so... take his pants off and see what kind of merkin he's got on. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like so, that. So yeah. random random shuffling here uh, gave us another Nightmare on Elm Street. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. Um, this is this is a tough one for me because I won't lie, I've been thinking about picking this for Horror Movie Night, possibly next year, because I feel like it has the best Freddy kill of all time with the cockroach death. Hell yeah. Like, that cockroach death is incredible. incredible. When but, that ooze comes out of his hand? Yeah, but the problem is that the rest of this movie, like this, is also the movie in which they ran out of budget and someone just gets killed in a karate dojo by an invisible yeah. Freddy. Because don't be rude, don't be rude. the the <laughs> motor the, the motorcycle sequence is that one in this one? Is that's this is five. five. That's five. Okay. Yeah. So, so which one? So this is not the one Rennie Harlan did. Rennie Harlan did this one. Yeah, right? Rennie Harlan did this one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I thought it was the one where the dude falls asleep on his motorcycle. That is the beginning of part five because that's the guy who survives this one. Am I right on this one, Matt? Uh, you're you're close enough. You're in a ballpark. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna need to, uh, <laughs> this is this is why I'm gonna go ahead and agree with Logan on just like Kevin because you start out and you had several Dream Warriors survive number three, and then at the beginning of this one, you have Yaka come out and be like, 
the dude who looks like Yafet Koto come out and be like, Kruger, you pussy! <laughs> <laughs> and you also have a dog piss fire. So you know what? I was I was gonna fight with you about this and say that it's a with or without you, but a dog piss fire to resurrect Freddy <laughs> is it is ridiculous enough for me to consider this. And plus, uh, you can't God. not watch that scene without going, Kruger, you pussy! <laughs> uh, so, Scott, I'll throw this on you. Ear, it was awesome. You're talking about a totally different movie with the deaf kid with the ear. That's, that's part, part five. six. That's part six. six. Oh, You're man, all over the board, John. I'm uh, all over the board. Let's Scott, put it on the board. <laughs> so, so, John's saying just like heaven, I'd be content with with or without you. Uh, but I could be convinced to just like Kevin, if you, where do you want to put this, Scott? You're the tiebreaker here. Roger, I you can say. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing. I was going to put it with you without you because the, the, the death senator, okay. You know, like aside from the cockroach, nothing really stands out. Um, four and five, I think, feel like they're, they're plots are just mediocre. I, I would put them both in, with or without oh, you personally i've, I've got it uh you're being generous to five i've got some plans for part five over here well the part five uh, has which, that which one had super death. freddy was so no, here's five? the thing is that That's part six. five the 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 motorcycle death in part five is not as good as could have been because you know we got to see like if you watch um never sleep again they have they've reconstructed some of that scene and it's, and it's so horrific. much better. It's yeah. so much better. But That's like, yeah, I, I think that you're right that it might be um, uh, another one bites the dust for five. But I wouldn't put it down all the way in uh, um, what's the bad. bad? I wouldn't put it bad. So uh, four uh, we'll, with or without you? Yeah. Oh. No, yeah. Let's do it. You know, I think that Matt really fucked up by using this tier maker. I, I, I applaud his efforts, but I think it's uh, I'm. Good. Yeah, you, I'm you using. Did. I'm using. It's not tier maker. I'm using yeah. Microsoft Word with the tier maker in here. To oh, uh, uh, what you can do is go ahead and left click that tier maker or right click it and see if you can lock that level. No, on the actual graphic. On the actual graphic, and see if you can have the drag the drop down menu open up under your mouse. I'm trying. Uh, it's not. Whatever. We'll get through it. Whatever. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay. Next up, uh, and this is one that I feel I could build a bit of a debate. Bride of Chucky. No, it's um, fun. That's I, I love it. I love it. I would say yeah. just like Evan for me. Um, yep. Now, Scott, I Are feel like have you watched it? I we I watched like the it. intro last week, and then I was like, mm, I'm not really in the mood. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> I, 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 I haven't watched the intro in the last twenty years, but I just remember it being <laughs> a fun comic book movie. Yeah, and that's yeah, and that director like had like a ton of movies coming out after this. Like he he was in like that Jet Li movie where he had to fight clones of himself. Like like horror movies used to be like a great way to start a directing career that wasn't a horror movie directing career. And you know. I I for me like this movie. I remember now. Do I think that this movie is still as good as I did as a child? And I probably have the nostalgia glasses on. But I remember this movie being really really funny. It was super meta. It was really like the first time they let Chucky break the fourth wall so it was really vibing off of that scream influence that was happening at that time because mm -hmm. um, I remember you like I remember specifically him killing John Ritter by uh, shooting a series of nails into his face and then as he drops to the ground Chucky looks at him like very confused he's like why does this remind me of something <laughs> like it was like little jokes and like Chucky winks and nods Deadpool before Deadpool yeah it was definitely it was Chucky turns into Deadpool he became the Deadpool of the, the horror genre um but if scott's not vibing on just like heaven i'm content with a with or without you on this one um, i am too but i won't put it lower than that There's but no i am way. too but only because i haven't seen that movie in this movie in 20 years so i can't defend it <laughs> hey jonathan used to work at blockbuster in high school living. i used to work at blockbuster in high school that's when i watched most of these movies uh, the repeat viewings and uh that's been 20 years plus I Next random generated one is Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. Um, oh, this is a this tough is, one. I'm going to have to go just like heaven with this one. I fucking love this movie. And I feel like so many people shit on this movie. Uh, John, this was the one. I'll, I'll remind you right now because you were. I see that look in your eye. This yeah. is 
This is the deaf kid with the hearing aid. This is Breck and Meyer getting sucked into a video game and Freddy yep. pulling out the, Shoot, the controller. Yep. yep. This is Ruzan Bar cameo with uh, her actual husband. Yep. Uh, it is. I'm Arnold, it, yeah. It is and, written and directed by a woman who worked with John Waters and wanted to make a John Waters like horror movie. And I think that she knocked it out of the park. Uh, Alice Cooper playing Freddie's father is Matt, you really know, yeah. I, did, I, I mean, I saw this movie. I saw most of these movies, the Freddie movies in, uh, in theaters. It, it, this is not, is this the the three? This is not the the. This three. is the 3D ending. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I saw that shit in the fucking ghoulies at the end that are flying in and out of his head. <laughs> they, I'm trying to grab them in the movie theater. Put this shit. You're trying to keep me from keeping the, putting this in simply the best. <laughs> Let's throw in so just like heaven right now. All right, <laughs> yeah. that's and an we, easy. You know, one. I, Matt, when yeah, you start I, refreshing I, I, me on that, movie. it's like that. That movie's awesome. Did we <laughs> did we do an episode on Freddy's Dead, Matt? We, we did. Episode, it was a right? live. It was a live episode that we did. Um, I forget who was with us on that one, but it was fun. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Hey, Friday check out my uh, Freddy sweet Freddy creepy Freddy. co. Can you see my the shirt that I'm wearing? It's got the mom. That mom is fun. creepy co. Twenty nineteen. <laughs> uh, where do y'all stand on this one? Because I just think of this as baghead tripping over a chair, Jason. <laughs> Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. Most of the Friday the Thirteenth are gonna go in another one bites the dust for me. Uh, I, I, hmm, I don't hate this one, uh, but I also don't have a passionate love for it. I'm content with this going in with or without you, because um, I think that was good. Because, like, here's the thing with this one. This is the arguments that I'll make for this. Because I agree with you. The Baghead, Jason, whatever. We've seen the Baghead killer in uh, Town That Dreaded Sundown. Um, but it does have two kills specifically that always stick out as, like, absolute classics. Uh, the, the machete in the face of the kid in the wheelchair as his body okay. then rolls down the staircase. And uh -huh. then the spearing the, cu the couple through the bed uh, as, they, uh, as they're making Fornicate. love. Um, Fornicate. Uh, as they get so, to fucking. As they get to fucking. Um, so like, they're going buck wild, Matt. You know about They that. are going buck wild, yeah. <laughs> uh, so like that is, those are my only two reasons to put it in with or without you, but those aren't strong arguments. So if you guys are leaning into another one bites the dust, that I can. Another I can one bites the dust, man. That. All right. I so try. Body count continues with that one. Yeah. Get ready to put a lot of Friday the 13th down in that shit. Yeah, they started churning these out once a year. Like, these are like... They pulled off... So when I was looking up trivia questions, um, eight of them in the 80s. Eight That's Friday insane. the 13th movies came out in the 80s. 1980, 81, 83, 84, Four, right? 85, that, 86, and 88. Yeah, they missed two and seven. Um <laughs> All right. Did the so, franchise not do that during the 2000s? That's the touche. <laughs> touche. Um, so here we go with Scream 2. Uh, I think that when this movie first came out, it got a lot of hate um, for just not being Scream. But the more that I watch it, the more that I think it is a very good movie. Uh, I will not throw a hissy fit if it ends up in the with or without you category, but I do think that it's deserving of the just like heaven category. Yeah. And I think that they really commented on the sequel. I like the opening with J Jada Pickett Smith in the bathroom and the theater and all that stuff. I th think it's fun. Oh, um, oh man. Is she the one that gets stabbed in the cheek or is it her boyfriend? Boyfriend. Uh, yeah. Oh, Who? That's a brutal yeah. kill. So I think, uh, yeah, and then the reveal at the end of the theater. I think this is uh, in the the actual school theater. I think this is a fun one. Uh, I'm with you though, Matt. It's going to go on with or without you, and you know we're going to mention that uh, less than Jake song on the soundtrack. <laughs> I think I love you. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wait, so it doesn't have to go in with or without you. I, I mean, I'm, I'm voting for with or without you. Yeah. Um, okay. John, are you voting with without you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, mean, I got I got something else from the series that's going to go in just like heaven. That's why I'm putting okay. it in with or without you. Okay, fair I'm enough. Strategically. Okay, I I can accept that. I mean, two movies can both be from just like heaven in the same franchise, but whatever. Um, so <laughs> uh, 
final chapter, part four, the one where they killed Jason. Yeah, this, this is where he falls out of the barn onto the. No, that's part three. No, this is the one with three. Corey Feldman hacking. The psychic uh, powers. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. You're, no. you're jumping all over the place. I'm jumping this to is, six, aren't I? You're jumping to seven. Uh, seven. Final chapter I'm is young, young, <laughs> young Corey Feldman just right in the cheek with the machete, and then he falls and it slides slowly down the machete with the tongue coming out of his. It's the kill is fantastic. The rest of the movie is just okay to me. Like this one. I know people who think this is like the top of like the Friday the 13th chain. And I, I mean, five. Um, let's put, let's go ahead and put it in another one. By the dust. <laughs> yeah. I'm with John. Like I said, uh, most of this series is going to go in another one. By the dust because they're just not memorable. Like I can barely remember what kills are where. Yeah. I, I mean, the most that I would argue for that one would have been with or without you. So I'm not going to throw any big fight in there. Now let's talk about some real shit. Oh no. Oh no. This is where oh, I'm going to Hell yeah. Is, I'm putting that I mean, just like heaven. Just like I'm heaven. Right there with you. <laughs> we we said it there with a bullet, baby. <laughs> uh, this is, so there's, Here's there's the only, is no puppet master is going to go in, in, um, in uh simply the simply best the so the best no. you're gonna get is as high as it's gonna go. second two. dude just part two of puppet master is so fucking fun um <laughs> one second we gotta Tom, find out uh, we gotta find out what we're here Tommy. for buddy Pain. uh so we're we're bouncing this with a following up that with texas chainsaw massacre of the next generation Ooh, oh. Simply that the one. best because you got, <laughs> you got two Oscar winners. You got <laughs> just based on like critical a north by northwest reference. Come yeah. on, that is <laughs> two Oscar winners, Matthew. Uh, this is the first one count? that I am. This is the first Do one I'm really content. Anything with you? Do these no. awards? Hollywood gives themselves credit bad. for doing their jobs. I'm, I'm putting this. This is going right into bad. BAD, bitch. That movie is terrible, and Renee Zellweger, uh, when she was playing, uh, who uh, help me out? She she did a biopic like a year or two ago on um, oh oh on Judy, Judy Garland, Garland. and yeah. she and she had to answer to this movie in all the interviews, and um, you know what it is, what it is. You're uh, just trying to make it in Austin, Texas, and you end up making some movies just to pay the rent. Uh, so Scott, real quick, turn around. <laughs> Love, 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 Kyle. <laughs> uh, so, let's oh, see. And, and don't forget Dennis Hopper. Is in, <laughs> oh, no, one? no, he's in a different one. He's in a different yeah, one. I know, I know. that's what I'm saying. We got, I'm telling you, this franchise has some cred. So, this is the only Nightmare on Elm Street movie that's not the remake. Uh, that I would consider putting in the bad category. Um, I think that this movie is almost unwatchable. I think that the the edits, all of the changes, the MPAA interfering with it, just make like the plot barely makes sense. I believe, I believe the concept is that Freddy can attack you in the real world if the baby is dreaming. I think that's yes. the premise of this movie, and yeah, that five is bad. Five goes to bad. Five <laughs> is fucking garbage. It, it is. I think it's a boring movie. Yeah, yeah it's just that's not the good. worst thing that can happen if you're to make yep. a horror movie, dude. <laughs> and it's even more impressive to be a boring movie with Freddy Krueger, where it's like the main thing is that they're interesting kills, no matter how bad the concept is. Um, I think. Yeah, I think the Nightmare on Elm Street movie is a movie that I would probably cut off a finger to, to direct. I think that that's like, <laughs> it's my it's, it's it's my favorite horror franchise and I would cut off a finger and direct a movie like that. <laughs> um so here's one that I think is worthy of throwing around some discussions because I could see it landing in one of two categories. Scream three. Now y'all said that it was a, a bit of I haven't seen it in a long time. This is one that you said was a uh, a franchise almost killer. Yeah, um, I would say another one bites the dust. I, wish I Brian don't was here. Yeah, I don't think that it's I don't think that it's at the level of bad that next generation and dream child Dude, it's are. It's fucking I, unwatchable. It is I, so, I, so incredibly whoa. misogynistic. Hey, 
John, I, you don't know. Unlike most of this uh, entire <laughs> genre? <laughs> no, like, listen. We had to rewatch this shit. Brian picked this fucking shit when we had... Um, um, oh, god damn. Um, Brett, Brett the, Simmons. Brett Simmons. I was forgetting his last name. Brett Simmons on promoting um, You Might Be the Killer. And Brian was like, oh, this is going to be awesome. And then we watch it, and Brian comes on, and he's like, so that was a mistake. And uh, this movie's <laughs> garbage. Um, and, and you know how many bad movies Brian's picked? Basically, 99% of the movies he picks are fucking terrible. And he apologized apologize for this one. As the as the head of Geekscape, like, do we have to make a change? Like, is there like a, a personnel change that we need to make? Logan, what do you do most of the days? Like, <laughs> no, no, Brian <laughs> has to do, do, right? hey, Brian, Brian, uh, Brian is here for a reason. He knows how to say one funny line every episode, and that's okay. really, yeah, really, we really all we need. Do our best of year fucking five. This motherfucker, like Megan, Liss and I listen to it on the A L E X A, um, and. God damn. It's basically just Brian. Brian's a, 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 a zinger in human form. Okay, Logan, Fuck if you can guy. get two funny lines in an episode, you're in. Okay, uh, buddy? So, Start working. So, Start working on the gift of gab, okay? I'll make an executive decision. Here's I'm, my... So I, I, can't make, I can't make a strong argument for this not going in bed, uh, but going into another one bites the dust. But there is one... And this is the thing. If you re-listen to that episode... The biggest argument that we have against this movie is interesting concepts that are completely done incorrectly. Mm. And there is one scene in this movie that I think is among the best scenes in any Scream film. And it's Nev Campbell walking around the movie set of her childhood bedroom is such a yeah. great sequence. It's such a great moment. And I think that it's a strong enough moment to put it just above Dream Child and next gen which i think have no redeeming qualities at all amongst them but okay. <laughs> in, in, Matt just reminded me what happens in this movie by saying that sequence i'm like all right. but here's here's my repost to matt james and, uh, uh, courtney cox's bangs <laughs> oh yeah so it's going and bad the, the dude. Song. all right and two creed songs right yeah two creed songs on the soundtrack <laughs> All right, so all right, here's one that I'm gonna I'm telling you right now before I drop this, I'm fighting for this one to go in simply the best. Child's play two. No. Yeah. Why are you fighting? Uh because Scott said like no. <laughs> uh yeah, I think I might be with Scott. Oh. <laughs> I mean that's good. Uh Matt it's explain good. this I mean, one to me. On this is I, yeah, I think that the baseball one, right? <laughs> I think that for what this movie is, um, it succeeds in ways that it absolutely has no business in doing. Uh, I'm going to throw around one of my favorite favorite phrases. It's blissfully short. It is a quick 77 minutes, uh, and it gets straight to the point. It hits all of the beats that I want. It hits all of the good beats of Child's Play hits none of the bad beats of Child's Play, has probably the most impressive animatronic Chucky doll, has some really great gore, has some really great kills, has some great scares. Now, obviously, we're looking at the stuff that's in the Simply the Best category, and they are all like genre-defining movies, and I get that. But we've we got to get one or two sequels in there so that it's not just oh only will. the first one why? deserving dream of warriors the best. will show up soon enough dream warriors <laughs> not there, Matt. why why do we have to force child's play 2 in there if it belongs in just like heaven all right actually, i actually i can't argue with tom i can't argue with tom's argument tom's argument is what convinced me <laughs> Because yeah, I mean, this is better than Hellraiser is pure insanity. Yeah, so. this can still be a, like the defining Child's Play movie, but I didn't know who thinks that Child's Play is on the on par with the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise in the first place. Nobody. Yeah, that's true. All right, so we got a lot of Child's Play coming up in this random generation. Oh, oh, uh, this is the paintball one. This is yeah. the paintball one. No, that movie fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting this one in uh, another one bites the dust. We just did yeah. an episode on it, and we got a great episode out of it, but it is not a good movie. That and the hair, the haircuts scene is pretty fucking dope, though. Yeah, I, I'm not even going to fight with that one. Um, so, John, I don't know if you've seen either one of these. Uh, so here we go. But Colt of Chucky uh, came out just That's a couple of years ago. One. 
yeah i didn't, I didn't see it they it got so here's the thing uh for those of y'all who watch, uh, watch and listen to horror movie night um Sometimes I get the solicitations because some yeah. people blindly send them to contact at geekscape.net and I'll forward them to Scott and Matt uh, if it's horror. And this is one that came into my inbox. And sometimes I think Matt and Scott get them directly now as well. But I got this one in my inbox. And my inbox, I think, just immediately forwarded it to you. I didn't want any part of it. <laughs> um, oh, oh I... but then you hype us up, you gas us up with the new Puppet Master. <laughs> oh, that movie was tight. It had Thomas no, that movie was fantastic. It had Thomas Lennon in it, dog. Yeah. Uh, so, Cold of Chucky. Fucking awful. <laughs> oh no, it's great. It's the we've we've said it before. It's the most rewatchable Puppet Master movie. Oh, uh, the new one with the one with Thomas Lennon. There's a one oh, right yeah. after it. Oh, oh, okay. No, yeah, no dude, I'm talking, talking about the I'm Thomas Lennon one. Little is right. We're talking like the new one. Oh, yeah. I, oh. I, 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 Little is oh. right. Is great. I watched Little is right. And I, Okay, I watched Little as Reich, and I think we're completely working on different standards of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Little as Reich is fucking fun, dude. Like, uh, Little is wrong. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna quote, I'm gonna quote Brian. I think this episode came out. Maybe it hasn't yet, but I'm gonna quote Brian because he summed it up beautifully. Which is, if you can't watch a decapitated body piss on its own decapitated head that's sitting in a toilet, then I don't want to be friends with you because that's fucking brilliance. <laughs> uh, Lo Logan did call it Blade the Iron Cross. I think that's the one I thought that's was straight the one that trash. You sent to us yeah. And you were like, dude, this looks tight. And we're like, Blade, yeah. like oh. I didn't even respond to you. I Listen, if John, if John it. says, you have to understand, if John says this looks tight or looks pretty badass to me, it means that it is trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, uh, I've known John for how have, long and you're just telling me this. Yeah, Scott, we have shorthand, Matt and I, that goes back <laughs> over a decade. And I thought you'd pick up on that because I, whenever I posted the Horror Movie Night Facebook group, which you should all be a part of because you're watching this right now, unless you're on YouTube, um, I've been posting this looks fucking tight. This looks badass all the time. I don't mean it for a second. It usually means that I think this is so trash. You will probably enjoy it. Uh, so and that's shorthand. Uh, that's straight up code. So Code of Chucky, um, it's, it's definitely badass. better. It's better than Child's Play 3. I could be all right with it being in Another One Bites the Dust, but I want to put it with or without you because it introduces what is such a cool concept of... Um, Charles Lee Ray being able to possess multiple Chucky dolls simultaneously and create like that's a hive okay. mind so army. That's absolutely something that they that's should have brought into the concept of the, the the mythos beforehand. Like it should have shown up in three. Like when yeah. we did our discussion of three, I was expecting that to happen, not remembering that that happened in Cult of Chucky because I watched it movie once. But I don't think that that's like enough to make this movie in With or Without You. And so I am heavily pushing for it to be in another one bites the dust because it's not unwatchable but it's definitely not I'll, something that i would seek out to rewatch anytime I'll, soon i'll agree with you because uh i also only watched it once and i'm just remembering that i was like oh that was fine but i didn't think like man i gotta watch that again um yeah, Charles now, playing, do it good man like now this one curse of chucky i will defend i think that curse of chucky this doesn't just like is, heaven for me yeah, That's this is this such a good movie. It is just a simple, low-budget, gothic horror film. Um, just going back to the basics. Chucky doll, loose, inside of a mansion. Uh, and just, it, it touches on... You're going to laugh at me when I say this, John, but it touches on a very Hitchcock-type concept of a invalid woman living alone in a mansion with a killer doll trying to get her and no one believing her. And it is such, like, touching in... Of industry and the status the fact that this invalid this woman that's in a wheelchair doesn't have any caretakers i'm in yeah the <laughs> also the that invalid woman is um the it, it's uh brad dorf's uh, daughter brad dorf's wife our uh, daughter yeah not like no, no matt you yeah. just put that in the second tier is that yeah just like yeah. heaven, bro. that's what i said just like heaven okay. it's it's a damn to, to quote Keep a up. TV show, it's a damn fine movie. On, John. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at. I mean, that's high for a Chucky movie. Show me, show me, show me how you do that trick. Scream four, uh, just like Evan. Uh, uh, yeah, not as good uh, as the the first, but it is just almost as good in my opinion. I was gonna argue for with or without you, but just the fact that he like re like redid. He came back almost 20 years later to do this is like it's that's a ballsy. 
and he did it well. And I yeah. think, in, unless I'm incorrect, I'm pretty sure this is the last Wes Craven movie. It was. That's not uh, right. There, there's that one where the dude had like the hook, and that one stunk. You remember that one, the Hitcher, or not the Hitcher? Uh, there's one where the dude had a meat hook, and he he was wearing a a, a giant. It was like a, it, well, I think it was. I think Scream 4 might have been the last Wes Craven movie. I feel like he did another one immediately before that or after that I'm felt checking. like the film equivalent of an old guy trying to scare a bunch of millennials. It wasn't going to happen. Are you talking about My Soul to Take? Because that was really fucking bad. But Yeah, um, yeah I'm talking about yeah. My Soul to Take. That movie yeah. is garbage, as the French would call it. Yeah, but I'm content with this in Just Like Heaven. So okay. here's, here's one worth talking about. Freddy versus Jason. I was um, wondering if you're going to bring this in here because I was going to I was going to insist that this goes in here because I didn't see it on Scott's list that he emailed us. I don't believe, but it needed. Oh, really? To be, I thought the, I'm pretty sure it's on there. We, yeah, it was the Friday Thirteenth movies. We need to yeah, talk about this. this movie. I think is fantastic. I think it's so much fun. See, I, I would I'm, say I'm that I said with it with that or uh, uh, no us because it's not completely unwatchable, but. The CGI really makes it difficult for Don't me. Be rude. Don't See, be rude. and I was going to say, I would toss it in with or without you. I think that um, they had an impossible task, right? They had the impossible task of living up to like almost a decade. What everybody of, wanted. Yeah, what everybody wanted. And I think that they did a decent enough job with what they wanted. And it's got some memorable kills, but I just don't think it's that good of a movie. Like, I've I seen think it once. Oh no! I saw it when it came out. <laughs> now, oh, John, no. I, I have it um, on my home video. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say because I feel like if I had saw this, I one of my regrets is that I didn't see this in theaters because I'm sure that it was a blast to see in theaters. But and like, there was that rumor that you don't know which ending you're gonna get. Yeah, like when they released it in theaters, there was that rumor, and I think that Matt, that is the right place to put it because I was gonna go for just like heaven, but I think so much of that is just my own nostalgia factor from living my entire life wanting to see that movie, and then I actually got to see it, so I think I was pretty hopped up on adrenaline <laughs> when I saw it because it's literally the movie we all wanted to see for thirty plus years, and we got to see it. There was that rumor that they had different uh, endings going to various theaters, and then of course. Um, you know, Jeff Katz at New Line who tried to get, I mean, he worked his ass off to get that movie made. And sadly, like, uh, New Line was, of course, the house that Freddie built. Uh, and it, you know, it, and it put out the Lord of the Rings movies. And New Line was such an awesome movie destroyed by the Golden Compass investment because they thought they had another Aww. Lord of the Rings franchise on them. But uh, Jeff Katz at New Line had a sequel to Freddy vs. Jason in the works that ended up coming out as a comic book series because it didn't end up happening as a movie. And y'all all know, I hope, that it was Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. Yeah. And, uh, and the comic book's fun. He wrote the comic book. It is a fun mo- It is a fun comic. But damn, did we want to see Freddy versus Jason versus Ash. I think for the same reason. It probably might not have been a good movie, but we just want to see it. And, uh, yeah. you know, and they kill a Destiny's Child character. I would have put it in Just Like Heaven. Scott puts it in Another One Bites the Dust. Matt puts it with or without you. I think the law of averages keeps it there. Yeah. So here's one that I have found to be one of the most divisive movies in this entire franchise. Um, I think that this movie is boring as shit. And I think that people immediately jump to well you have to like it because it's where he gets his hockey mask he's got and his like, hockey mask. <laughs> like that is not a good no. enough is reason the crispin glover dance scene too no 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 we'll get to the the crispin glover Step dancing five. sequence was in part four we already uh yeah. waltz oh, right yeah. past it um but this is the one this is scott let me put you in a time machine when we did our first ever live stream movie marathon and this was the friday the 13th movie we picked and we just sat in silence because we had nothing to say. <laughs> we no, I agree with you. Right? I, think, <laughs> I think people like this one because it's where Jason gets his mask. But other than that, it's not a really good movie. Uh, and Logan wants to throw it right into bad. I wouldn't even does the fact, yeah, does the fact that he gets a... I mean, dude, how did, how did this franchise survive two and three? Yeah, three really should have been the killer. You're right. 
Yeah, I'm fine with that going in bad because I think that there's going to be at least one more that finds its way into bad. I don't know. I don't know because I have some weird hot takes with the Friday the 13th. But what franchise. a testament to like horror iconography, though, that this guy in a hockey mask carries a franchise that has this many duds. Yeah. Oh, it's impressive. <laughs> it's so it's true. Insane. Just wait but until we it get has some, later movies too. some winners, too. And we are looking at it right here. Uh, Jason Lives, Friday the 13th, Part 6. This is the Psychic Powers one. This is the one no, with Paul. That's no, no, no. Actually, this, is this the Paul Rudd one, Matthew? The, did you say the Paul, Paul Rudd, Rudd one? Is Halloween that's Halloween. Halloween. You John, got it. You got John, it. You got it. Guys, uh, this, where am I here? Oh, this the franchise is, that you didn't think was a slasher franchise you didn't put in here? <laughs> so this was... I'm just going to move right back. <laughs> uh, this was... Uh, I would argue... We give Scream a lot of credit for meta horror, but Jason Lives got there first. Uh, Jason Lives just is so aware that it is the sixth part of a failing franchise. And they have so much fun with this movie. Uh, they This is the one, John, where... You drag the person out with a sleeping bag. No. This is Damn the it, one... Matt. This, is this, that seven? The, this is that is seven, yeah. Uh, oh, this is the, got my vote for simply the this, best. This is the one where Jason throws a person into a tree trunk and it leaves a bloody smiley face. This is the one where there's a group retreat Grabs having it. paintball. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the one where they. This smash is the, the one where the kid looks at the other kid and goes, "So what did you want to be when you grow up?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, there's there's a scene where a grave digger is burying a dead body that's all rotted, and he goes. Damn kids always digging up these bodies and then looks straight down the camera at the audience and goes, some of y'all folks have a sick sense of entertainment. Like, but is that the opening scene where he gets struck by lightning and it brings yes. yeah. Jason yeah. back? Okay. I, I think I'm... simply the best for me. I okay. agree. I, I don't think that the Friday the 13th movies will ever hit the heights that this hits. And I well, think it's fitting that it's... Five yet, Matthew, but let's keep going. <laughs> I think it's fitting that it's right there next to Scream because I, I think that they are a perfect double feature. Uh, John, uh -huh. you've been what thinking about us? what what a mess, what a mess these movies are because I'm putting kills in all other directions. I'm putting actors in different franchises. Like what a it's mess. So this is the one. This look. is the one you've been thinking it is for yeah, the longest this time. This is the shit. This is the shit. I Let me tell you why. Let me tell you. you shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. You shut the fuck up. Alice Cooper soundtrack. <laughs> Let's get that's in that. part six. No, what about the thing? <laughs> Wait, so yeah, part he's eight, like he they're banging in the 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 RV in the, in the, the, he, the, the RV. He's like, oh, yeah. this oh, is so part six is the shit. Take this that's thing off the screen. <laughs> this, this is, you know what? Part six is the yeah, you guys got it right. Take this off the screen, Matthew. Uh, Take it so, off the screen. So, yeah, when Kurt when Kurt gets the knife in the side of his face and the girl gets her face through the back of the <laughs> RV. Oh, part six. Yeah, get this off the screen, Matthew. This ain't even <laughs> uh, so new blood, new blood. I know a lot of people who swear by this movie. Logan over here is saying that it's a just like heaven pick. I Fuck no, Logan. could never get in this movie. I would say another one bites the dust for me. Okay. Yeah, That'd it's be not nice bad to Logan. because it is amusing. Matt, be careful. I told you to lock down that layer, please. <laughs> Uh Matthew yeah, I'm glad I'm, right. I'm glad you guys refreshed me on Friday Thirteenth Part Six. That, that movie's tight as hell. Yeah, no, that's one worth watching no, many like, a time. See, he's using his words wrong. It is legitimately tight instead of that's badass. Yeah, uh, there's strange. a there's a tone thing though. Oh, this yeah, one with a that text thing? me. <laughs> I'm, gonna uh, do the I'm gonna do that dance with, that the pop rock that pop punk the punk girl does, and that's she's like. That's not in this one. That's in your yeah, there. But but this but, is but this one is when she I think she's doing that dance in her in her room on the cruise ship. No, uh, I mean maybe she is, but you're yes. thinking of a different dance. You're th I will we will talk about that in okay. just a second. Okay. Uh, but Jason takes Manhattan. I mean, the only thing that this movie has got going for it that could possibly keep it out of the bad category is that is. it's it's almost so bad that it's entertaining. Yeah, like the boxing on the roof scene, like it's pretty like bad if, I'm looking, if I'm looking at where we rank these, like part three is is bad because it is in, incredibly boring. Um, 
But Jason Takes Manhattan has almost a charm in how bad it is, where I would say maybe another one bites the dust. But there's no way in hell I'm putting this higher than another one bites the dust. Yeah, let's put it there. Um, you know, I agree. The, the stupid acid bath part at the end, like this. Yeah, yeah the acid running through when, the streets of New York City. Vomits water, a, too. That's pretty This delightful. is another one I saw in theaters, and uh, no me gusta. <laughs> All right. Now, John, you've been waiting for this one. I've been waiting for this, guys. And it goes, just put it in the top right now, Matt. Yeah, start, <laughs> Matt, Matt, start another category above Simply the Best. I got to think of the song like that for that one, but but like it's in its own category. You're the because, best around from uh, Karate Kid. Let's go, because let me tell you straight up, like that porta potty scene. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Hey, baby. You're going to get it, bitch. Every single one. Of, <laughs> let me tell you something. I went running. You know, I like to do the exercise, and I. And these are people who do not watch horror movies. They are not as like this, these are different people. These are doctors and professional individuals. They don't sit around and talk about pop culture on the internet like we do. And after having me involved in, in my friend group my, for several years, they're all saying when they have to go to the bathroom, "Damn enchiladas." <laughs> Like this morning, that's we your were... fault, though. That's not Friday the 13th. You know what? Fault. Uh, you think that YouTube video didn't go to each and every single one of them? <laughs> like, I gotta tell you, th this morning it's not even 6 a.m. We're sitting there freezing in Griffith Park, and one of my friends gets out of his car and goes, I got some goddamn it, <laughs> uh, movie, I is, mean, is this movie also have the banana kill? This has the banana kill. This movie, hey, come, I... hey, come on, man, make a new, make a new category right now. I, I will uh, concede to putting this in Just Like Heaven. I think that <laughs> as far as the Friday the 13th movies goes, this movie has been ran through the gutter by fans. <laughs> Who Matthew, just, I know you're just putting it in that category because of me, and thank you. You're a good friend. No, I legitimately, as I have watched these franchise, this franchise over and over Scott, and over again, uh, he doesn't want that, to be a part of this. <laughs> that movie is so fucking fun and it's like that's all i ask in a friday the 13th movie is i just want to have fun i just want to have fun and as you can see Girls on the way that we rank fun. these yeah you have a they have... no <laughs> uh so anyway dude I have, I have two you... katanas. Oh my God. you know you're <laughs> such a terrible terrible influence on matt you are an adult Matt started man. Monologue, so I thought I'd distract him. You are an adult man with two katanas. Matt is like an adult man, man who's going to die buried under his DVD and Blu-rays. There's, there's, he, he needs a better role model. No, he doesn't. He needs a role model. Period. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So while John's distracted with swords, uh, Hellbound, Hellraiser two. Um, I do really enjoy the sequel. Uh, I don't think it belongs in simply the best. Um, it's just like heaven. Because yeah, it's just of, like I think that the lab scenes could be better. They look really cheap. Yeah, but I do love um, the claymation. I, I mean, you know, claymation just does it for me. But the claymation uh, worm creatures that come out of the one dude's hands. Uh, there's yeah. just some. There's some really cool, innovative shit that happens. Does he have uh, nunchucks now? Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing that he's ever felt the touch of a woman. Many Why of am I surprised uh, that the guy that runs a thing called Geekscape has a bunch <laughs> of fucking mall ninja gear? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Is God. he getting his drawing stars and his katanas now? <laughs> oh, you bought that? <laughs> no. It was given to me. It's a gift from the king of so-and-so. <laughs> so, Scott, do you want to defend... I, I know this is like your it's real. fucking shit. It's real. You, you, oh my I, God. I launched Subway sandwiches out of it. <laughs> Anybody want a hoagie? I want a t-shirt. Toss me a t-shirt, bro. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to put this one at um, with Without You just because this is a movie that is great for me, but I realize that it's not great for everyone. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I at the highest I would give it with or without you. At the lowest, I would give it another one bites the dust. It's definitely not bad. It's not unwatchable. It is the the less 
less gasp of fresh air in this franchise before it just pummels well, down we're, a cliff. We stop discussing. We're, we're not going to discuss anything after Hellraiser Four. I hope that John has remembered that, that this is the last one in the series that we're. I, I, according to your brief, I, I do. Yeah. Let's. Uh, so with or without you, is that where we're going with this? I'll. I'll. I'll agree with that. Why not? It's got its moments. Let's move forward into the last of the Hellraisers. Hellraiser 3. Scott's personal favorite for just pure blasphemy. It is my personal favorite. So does it go in Just Like Heaven? Yeah, it goes in Just Like Heaven for me. It's definitely not simply the best because it's not a good movie, but it is no. the most rewatchable of the Hellraisers, in my opinion. It's got because like. Because kills? I, no, I, the first and third acts are phenomenal. The middle is. I get these. Slow. I get this in two mixed up. <laughs> this is the one with the the boiler room, which is the name of that bar. The guy who gets the the pillar. Um, I think it's called what's what's it called? Um, the pillar of salt or or, or something or, like it. Um, Pinhead yeah. is stuck in a giant piece of cement, like he's fucking Han and Solo he in Thomas to, <laughs> Yeah, and they force his people, the, the, the dude, to kill for him. That brings him out into the real world. He's no longer kept in by the box and people opening the box. Um, and then he goes on this killing spree with a bunch of Cenobites in the um, in the in this like industrial bar with all the fire in the background. And then he makes a bunch of Cenobites. So one guy is a cameraman, and so he's got like the telescoping camera in his eye. And another guy is the bartender, and he like can drink alcohol and blow flames on their CD Cenobite. And then at the end, they all get sucked back into the box, and it's like the movie didn't exist. Well, I feel like it's, it's amazing. It's such a bookend. I'm good. I'm good without right. it. All right. With, without you? Uh, no. So Scott, you want... Okay. Okay. I want without you. you. you yelled, and let's go ahead and negotiate with terrorists, I guess. <laughs> well, you're the one with the fucking rocket launcher. I used right. to go to Subway. Amer <laughs> Open America. Right. <laughs> yeah, Gosh, just I mean, come on. You know, where to put this one. you know where to put this one. This is a perfect when movie. When I close my eyes, I realize. This isn't Dungeons and Dragons, kid. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, you don't. I mean, that is the template for making a sequel. To a horror film, uh, one hundred and ten percent. It is you. You stick to familiarity, but you also raise the stakes of everything that we've seen up until that point. Uh, it is a flawless movie. Um, so here's one that it's it's tough to figure out where I want to put this one because it almost feels like it doesn't belong in this list with the rest of these movies. Yeah, it does it? It's Matt. Would you call this meta? I hate to tell you guys, but I, I'm putting this in simply the best, strictly because it's the scariest Nightmare on Elm Street. You guys can argue, and, and you know we come to a consensus, oh no no no. That's, I, that's I, all I have to say about it. I'm. I mean, I wouldn't put it any lower than just like heaven. Honestly, I just think that it's in the realm of like everything else that we're talking about. Even the best movies that we've had in here, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the first Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream, like there's this element of schlockiness to them under under the layer. But this is like the he least so schlocky movie ever. Like this is so dead serious. That I, like, I want to make a film. Yeah. And then he made music Another of the film. heart. After he did and people under the stairs. <laughs> music of the heart. Yeah. And I went and saw David Lynch's straight story in theaters too. And that was a good one. Now, I'll, I'll agree with this being simply the best. I really do think it is a, a brilliant sequel. Um, just, again, like we said with, I mean, in a completely different way, like we were saying with Freddy's Revenge, just to, the, the cojones to just do something so dramatically out of left field. Or uh, otherwise, it's the Friday 13th movies, you know what I mean? And Well, and that's why, the, that's why people, I mean, I'll never... Well, we can talk about it, but like I'll never understand the love of Jason because I do feel like looking at our our playing field, like Jason so rarely hits the highs that Nightmare on Elm Street consistently hits. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jason X, I think this movie's shit, and I know people love it. And I think it's total shit. Uh, yeah, but do they love it the same way that people are like, "Yo, Leprechaun in the Hood"? Because yeah, yeah, it's like, "Yo, dude, it's I'm I'm the I'm the witty guy at the party." Yeah, yo, you know what's title? What a fucking edge lord! Throw it in the yeah, trash. Yeah, this is. I, I was gonna say this is. This is bad. Jason. 
Jason X being someone's favorite Friday the 13th movie is like the same person. He's like, you know what my favorite Christmas movie is? Die Hard. Die Hard is my favorite. I was going to say the exact same thing, Matt. It's yeah. Like, fucking, hey, look how impressive it is. Uh, I don't know that Gremlins exists. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who says Die Hard is their favorite, like their favorite Christmas movie. A, people have been saying that for 20 years. And you're not original and you're not going to get laid saying it. And second, Everybody knows Gremlins exists, and so now you're just a fucking idiot. Stop <laughs> saying Die Hard is your favorite Christmas movie. It's Gremlins. It will always be Gremlins. This movie's tight. Saw it in theaters. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, um, run on sentence, London. I, I would... So, I know Jackie would back me up on this, uh, but... I'm, I would be content with this in the with or without you. I know that's insanity. I'll also go with another one bites the dust. I don't think that this is bad on the level that Jason X and Friday 13th 3D is. And I'm going to say same reason that we just talked about with Freddy's Revenge. It is a really crazy idea mm -hmm. to take Jason and be like, but you know, Jason's actually just this worm from hell that can just like anybody can just swallow it, and then they're they're like the new Jason. And it's, I hate it. it's, it's so super rapey. It. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, sorry. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust is the nicest I can say for it. And anybody watching, um, this is going to get completely disemboweled by me in a couple weeks on the main feed. And there's a user on Facebook who says that his favorite ki movie is Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. I'm assuming it's a him because he's watching Christmas. horror movies. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I I I'll I'll go with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. You can like that movie. That's a that's an yeah. okay movie. That's Shazam. Really, so I really re I rewatched Shazam uh, this Christmas. I was like, oh, and I like Shazam. It's not going to be one that I watch at Christmas. It's it's <laughs> it's too long. Is that it's the not Christmas. With Shaq? No, that's. No. No, that's the one with Zach oh, Levy that came out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, dude. I hey, love so Meg and I watched Shazam. Shazam movie. That's a Christmas movie? It takes well, place at Christmas. It's it's uh fantastic. And also I'm just gonna throw this out there. So Ralph, uh you wanna go to streamyard.com slash Facebook, and then you'll get things where it has your name and picture. <laughs> yeah, it so. just says Facebook user, so like and you know how many Ralphs I know? I yeah. know so many Ralphs. He's like, it's Ralph, motherfuckers. I'm like, okay. Welcome to every <laughs> truck stop in America. <laughs> uh, it's the, me, Brad. Okay. <laughs> it's me, your brother. <laughs> the bitches. You didn't recognize me? It's Rick. <laughs> okay, uh, Sarah. <laughs> Puppet Master 3, Toulon's Revenge, the one with the Nazis. Um, oh, this one's also Logan really fun. Said about like an hour ago that this is the one that you you thought that Puppet Master Two had the Nazi titties, but no, Nazi boobs are in this movie. Yeah, no, I, I, uh, I didn't post that up there because I knew that he was wrong. Um, but uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to publicly call him out like that. But uh, you know, Scott, <laughs> just throw him under the bus. Uh, VHS Ralph. Uh, I know Ralph. Hoppel. That doesn't help, Ralph. <laughs> uh, I, know. So, I know Ralph. We know Ralph. He joined us I, for our I'm honestly, episode. I'm honestly uh, just fucking with Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Puppet Master 3, uh, Logan saying simply the best. I think that that's a little much. I would say that it's it right is. there with Puppet Master 2 in Just Like Heaven. Um, just because yeah. Six Shooter. Six Shooter is such a great puppet. Uh, probably the one that is the least utilized, and it bums me out. Does anyone. It's because his mat. bullets are so small, Matt. That's true. Anyone well, argue with that? Is anyone going to disagree with this going there? I would put this in with or without you just because um, I don't think it's as rewatchable as um, two, but it's got nudity and it's got zombie or uh, Nazis getting murdered. So it's a real toss up. I think John needs to make the decision on if it goes in just like heaven or not. Uh, let me see where the rest of these rankings are on the Puppet Masters. Is it as good as that second one? <laughs> I, don't know, I mean, I like Torch. Torch is my favorite. I bounce back and forth. I, I'm yeah, fine with without this. you. I'm okay. fine with with or without you. It's a three star movie. If we're gonna look at it in those in that lens, it has the best Toulon. Yeah, 
It, Matt, I you, don't... how many Matt, two star movies for you though? Like you got a whole closet, like you got a whole shelf full of them to, behind you. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna die underneath them one night. I love how I love how now he's being critical. Whatever. Uh, I mean, listen, life, but tonight... I I want to make sure it's known. I'm being critical. We have not put a single poster up that isn't a movie that's somewhere on this shelf. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know about this. It's trash. I can't wait for Criterion to reissue it. <laughs> so, Seed of Chucky. Criterion is going to reissue fucking Seed of Chucky. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not going to die on the hill. Uh, Brian says it best. Seed of Chucky is a great movie, except for the fact that it's a very bad Chucky movie. Uh, as far as like a meta takedown of Hollywood, it is very funny. It's very on the nose, but it is a terrible horror movie. Um, I would say another one bites the dust for me on this. Okay. I'm saying bad. And Oh, another one by dirty. Uh, Matt, I know this is difficult for you, but to throw it in there. Where where'd you go with it, John? Another one by one bite of dust. That's fine by me. I think that's fair. We got two for that. That's and a bad guy. Hey, Ralph Oppel just joined us. Hey Ralph, thanks for <laughs> <laughs> dude. There was this other guy on here what pretending to be about? you. It was ridiculous. Uh-uh. uh-uh. It was insane. I definitely Leather thought that was a different face. Ralph. So sorry, Ralph. <laughs> Apple. Apple. Uh, Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, the most controversial horror film ever is finally here. Uh, bold statement on that poster. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I love how he's fucking dirty as shit, but his saw is super clean, and that's the thing he uses to hack people up. It's because the saw is family, dude. The saw yeah. is family. Um, I mean, this movie to me is almost <laughs> This movie is almost as bad as Next Gen for me. I would say another one bites the dust at best for me personally. Uh, because because the highlight of this movie is the trailer for this movie. Um, I was about to say, you... the only thing keeping this out of bad is literally the trailer. We are and... all... But, but can that count, guys? Uh, John, have Actually, you seen the trailer for this movie? No, is oh, the trailer man. great? Because I don't think it should have any dude. It's, bearing. it's, it's all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Hold on a second. No, 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 no. Stop. We will. I'm gonna resolve this right the fuck now. Uh, if if I recognize, if I recognize this trailer in the first five seconds, don't do this. <laughs> it, don't it's do only a it's only a thirty second trailer. This was like the teaser trailer, but but here we not go. I miss the new line logo. Oh, so good. I'm gonna get it tattooed on me. Matt, I remember this look. I remember this from the movie theaters. <laughs> that actor never works Some again. Tales are told <laughs> and soon forgotten. <laughs> but a legend. Is forever. <laughs> yeah, I do remember this trailer. And Matt, uh, this has no bearing on the film. You cannot include a trailer as. <laughs> yeah, that is an iconic trailer, but it has no bearing on what the process, Matt. This movie is bad. It's a pretty badass, maybe. Uh, no, that's fine. It is. It is no, not a good no, movie. Now, now open up a. Uh, now put take out a uh, a piece of artwork for the trailer, and we'll put that in at least just like heaven. <laughs> that is probably one of my favorite movie trailers of all time. And yeah, we are down to the last one. TCM Part Stupid. Two. Doing. Stupid I mean. Man. The poster, the poster doing a parody of The Breakfast Club, just letting you know right out the gate that this movie is not taking itself seriously at all. I think it's the only way that this thing could have gone. Where yeah. like, I think it's <laughs> it's just like heaven. Dude, or is no, that... it, it's in simply the best. I am. Right. That's a hill I'll die on. Wait, wait, wait. We got to have consensus here, though. So John is saying just like heaven. I'm saying simply the best. What's Matt saying? I am like in this weird teeter between simply the best into into just like heaven. Um, but I, I think I got to go. I'm going to go simply the best just because just because 
that opening sequence of the two guys prank calling the radio station while they're being attacked by Leatherface, and he like decapitates the guy at the wheel, and it's this like headless body with blood spurting everywhere, and the two human hands up trying to feel where his head used to be, while the passenger is just screaming trying to grab the wheel. <laughs> it, it is it is Toby Hooper just just loving the insanity of what he has been given money to make. What uh, year was that movie? Was that one? Man? 87. 87? Yeah. yeah. 87 years, years later. That's the, you mentioned Dennis Hopper earlier. That's the Dennis Hopper, That's the one. Dennis Hopper one. That's the chainsaw battle. Uh, I think that this is Go. a pretty damn good tier list. Okay. Uh, are we going to do the remakes of Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday nope, 13? Those are <laughs> no. days, those do not count. I, I just remember the Sam Bayer like Friday 13 or Nightmare on Elm Street remake was like it like attacked me. It felt it felt so wrong. Yeah, like, I mean that would be an instant bad for me. Like that that is I genuinely think that is one of the worst remakes that has ever I, been I, produced. I hate it. Yeah, I like hate it. it misses every single point of like what made those movies and made Freddy interesting. Um but uh, John, we are like just at the time where we are wrapping it up. So I can't believe we did it. Yeah, we did it in 90 minutes. Scott didn't think we could. Really? Because <laughs> I talk so much. I think that's yeah. it. <laughs> Do you remember Chud? <laughs> Do you remember Gremlins too? <laughs> you know, I'm just trying to get Matt to uh to edit a lot, right? <laughs> you succeed oh. every time. What else, um, what else you gotta do? <laughs> so uh Scott. I need you to email me or Facebook wait, wait. send me a Fear Street cover. Um, I will in a second, but um, Bold, uh, Bold T asked why no zombie movies. It's a slasher list. It was just yeah, it was all, it was exclusively yeah, yeah exclusively well, slashers. You, you your comment exclusively as why slashers I, minus the Halloween franchise Halloween. because of mass executive decision. Um, well, also just because we forgot about it, but also because yeah, we already we. We did a uh, we did a ranking list on our previous podcast uh, on a previous episode. It just felt like we were doubling down Josh on the Hartnett. same information. Josh Hartnett would have been in my just like heaven, possibly simply the best category. I'm just saying. Josh Hartnett all the way, and not this last one, which was I hate. I did not like the 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 Danny McBride uh, one at all. I think Scott agrees with you on that, right? Well, it's like wait, which come one? on. She Damn it, the newest Halloween. one that came out, Halloween, where she trains for like forty years to kill Michael Myers, and then oh she yeah, doesn't I fucking even... hated Halloween twenty eight. Like you literally 19. train for forty years, and then when you have them trapped, you don't watch the fucking house burn down and go in and start chopping up the pieces. Like you train for forty years, and it's like, oh, we good. I'm gonna walk away. No, you train for forty years. Put in another ten minutes and make sure that thing is chopped up, crispy. <laughs> And in like a million places, okay, that made no sense. Yeah, and also I don't yeah. like how they they're trying to make him not a supernatural killer in the the new ones by being like, yeah, he survived that. No fucking way, you survived that. Like it's just dumb. Stop. You empty every fucking clip in the house into his ass. You've been training <laughs> yeah. for forty years. All right, forty so, years. So I don't disagree with any of the things that you guys are saying, but. Throw it up, Matt. Let's keep the ranking going. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, in in the meantime, while we're moving things along, uh, John, how about you tell people about this beautiful beast that you created called Geekscape? And while you're doing that, Scott, send me the Fear Street book so that we can throw it up on the screen for you, me, and Kyle doing Fear Street. Do you pitch. want it? Uh, do you want it? Uh, can I send it to you on Facebook? Yeah, that's fine. Um, and Kyle, if you're watching this, that's your tip that it's time to jump in and join us in a, in a couple of minutes. I actually stayed in the waiting room uh, and Matt was like, hey, you gotta, uh, we're still wrapping up uh, Stephen Bay. And I was like, no, no, no. I just want to show you my karate skills. And I sat in the waiting room <laughs> waiting to come on with my nunchucks, just showing them to Matt who was probably freaking out about his live stream and how it's going. So because Matt put in so much energy, <laughs> before you go and check out all the other Geekscape stuff, all the other podcasts that Matt works on and that we provide here at Geekscape, what I really want you to do is go to this link that you see scrolling at the bottom of your screen. That's why we're here. And uh, I think that it's a great, great, great cause. And Matt, I'm really glad that you used Geekscape, the podcast that we turned into a podcast network with your help. Uh, I mean, primarily it's you turning us into a podcast network. Thank you, Matt. Um, 
And uh, Geekscape allows us to do a lot of cool things um, besides just you know provide horror movie night, but to do something like this where it's a charity. So first and foremost, what I would love for you all to do is follow the instructions scrolling at the bottom of your screen, donate to Scares That Care, and remember, take a screen grab of that receipt of your donation, send it into the Horror Movie Night kids, and get yourselves in the running for those T-shirts um, because I can't even get one at this point. They're just they're they're too limited edition. Um, yeah, and as for Geekscape, find us on all the podcatchers. Look for it if you want to listen to the flagship show. That's mine. It's just general geekery. I'm about a mile wide and an inch deep, as you can tell from our our tier list. Like I've seen a lot of it. <laughs> Again, I'm like, eh, kind of. So, dude, if, if, it reminds, it, if there's comic it. books involved, though, you are like, your brain is I, like a fucking steel trap. I go pretty deep on the comics. I can go pretty deep on a lot of the video games, especially Nintendo, and um, and in a lot of a lot of films. But but if we start going very genre specific, like you boys do with horror, um, you see you see where I run out of room real fast. Um, someone's gonna have to get killed in a porta potty, or I start forgetting things real fast. So, <laughs> uh, well, John, I mean, I've told you before a million times that like this journey that I'm on wouldn't have started without Geekscape, uh, the first podcast yeah, I ever I'm listened sure. to. Uh, and here I am, 15 years later, uh, just doing my thing. Uh, could have been a doctor, you could have been a lawyer, you could have been so many <laughs> no, things. No, I no. Pretty confident those weren't in the future. <laughs> but uh, John, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you being here. I mean, the best, the king. Uh, so long, Podfather. 